Okay, we have covered body awareness and uh, the starfish exercise. I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's goofy, but honestly, it is super effective if uh, practiced over time. Many of these exercises might actually be very goofy. <laughs> so, breathing awareness and exercises. So, before we move into these exercises, I would like to go over some common misconceptions before we do. And you can actually find this in your packet um, in the breathing awareness and exercises section. So, the first misconception. When people hear, inhale to full capacity, it is important not to overfill. You do not want to get to the point where you're tensing up your larynx and tensing up your shoulders. That is a no-no. You do not want to do that. So, what I tell my students, if they're struggling to find where their fill point is, I tell them to think of this area, the collarbone, right here, right below the larynx as their fill point. So that way, it, it, it keeps you from overfilling the larynx. It keeps you from tensing the shoulders. Anything above here is relaxed and your, your neck stays elongated, your head stays in the right position. So this is a good fill point to stick with. Second misconception, the belly breath. There's nothing wrong with that term, except I find that people misunderstand that term. They think when you're doing a belly breath that the navel, this area right here in the hips, that's what expands out the most. That is actually incorrect and can actually lead to more tension in your body than necessary. The way that I want you to think of expanding out when you are inhaling, when you are um, you know, getting the air that you need to get for your voice. This right here, the solar plexus, the, the space that's about, I would say, two or three inches from your sternum and two to three inches from your navel, right here in the middle, that part is what expands the most, right where the diaphragm sits. That's the thing that should expand the most. And if anything, it should feel like the shape of a globe. And that right there is the equator with the South Pole and the North Pole. So hopefully that clarifies what a belly breath is all about. Now, the third misconception. You'll notice that I assign breathing in through the mouth quite a bit, actually, and will be through the vocal exercises that we are doing. Rarely will I ask you to breathe in through the nose unless it is for relaxation purposes. So, when you are breathing in through the mouth, it is important to understand that you are not <gasps> vocalizing and opening up your mouth as wide as it can possibly go. That is, that is another big no-no because that'll dry out the back of your throat if you vocalize while you breathe in. That's only going to mess up your vocal folds doing so. So the way that I want you to think of the breath in is a drop of the diaphragm, a drop of the muscles here and here, and an expanse as well. It's a downward and, a downward and outward motion. And your teeth, we've talked about your teeth in the anatomy section, they also act as a nice little filter for the air around you. So when you breathe in, keeping a relaxed mouth and allowing the air to filter through your front teeth actually humidifies the air naturally and keeps the air from getting dry in the back of your mouth. So think of it as a drop, not as a pull. So those are the three misconceptions that I encounter quite a bit with students, and I wanted to make sure we're clarified before we move in to the breathing exercises. So with that understood, let's go ahead and get started with those. All right, so it is time to do our very first breathing exercise, which I like to call the awareness exercise. This is designed to help you tune in to how your body naturally breathes, which, which obviously that is going to have a very positive impact on your experience throughout this entire video tutorial. So 
It involves laying on the floor on your back, which I'm going to demonstrate and walk through the steps on here right at this very moment. So if you have a yoga mat or a pillow, feel free to use that at this point. But uh, I'm just gonna put my hat down here and I am going to lay on the floor, first and foremost, sitting down as slowly and as smoothly as I possibly can, making sure that my knees are tucked up to my chest, that my feet are as flat on the floor as possible, and I'm going to lay back, readjust my feet, get a good handle on how my back feels on the floor, Make sure that my feet are also flat on the floor, that my knees are pointed up towards the ceiling because that will allow the thoracic area to stretch, allow this area to stretch, which we covered in the anatomy section of today's tutorial. I'm going to adjust my back, make sure that I can feel the floor with most of my back here. Adjust the pelvis, get a really good feel for what the floor feels like. Um, Take the hands. As you can see, this is how they are shaped. You're spreading them out and clasping them together, placing the thumbs together, placing the pinky fingers together, and placing them on your abdomen, right where your diaphragm sits. So your pinky fingers are right where your belly button is, and your thumbs are right beneath your sternum. Let the arms relax. Continue to look straight up at the ceiling, I encourage you to close your eyes during this exercise. And all I want you to do is notice what happens every time you breathe in and breathe out. You're not forcing yourself to do anything out of the ordinary. You're not commanding yourself. You're simply tuning in how your breath is working. You may notice a natural movement in your belly. You may notice that your diaphragm is naturally and rhythmically expanding and moving your hands up towards the ceiling and letting them come back down when you breathe out. Nice and relaxed, maintaining good, natural resting posture, checking in with the neck, making sure that it's nice and straight, that there's a natural bend in the, in the neck, that the spine is neutral. Just take a few seconds to really tune in, to tune your instrument to get ready to sing. Now, on the count of three, I want you to breathe in through the nose, nice and slow. And we're going to hold that for five seconds, then breathe out, then hold for eight, then breathe out, and then hold for 10 and breathe out. So here we go. Count of three. One, two, three. Breathe in. Full capacity up to the collarbone. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Very good. Now, at this point, go ahead and stretch the arms, stretch the legs, get a really good stretch in while you're here on the floor, extending the arms out, extending the legs. And once you're ready, go ahead and roll to whichever side you like. and slowly 
maintain your balance, and stand up. And adjust yourself to get ready to do the next breathing exercise. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so we've done the breathing awareness exercise and now it is time to move on to the balloon breath exercise. This is a really great exercise to build endurance, strength, and flexibility in the core muscles that have to do with your respiratory system. That's your abdomen, that's your lower back, that's your chest, the lungs, the diaphragm, all of these aspects are, are, are positively impacted by this exercise. We're going to do two variations. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. I'm going to demonstrate them. There will be a timer somewhere on the screen during these two variations, which will time up to a minute. I want you to last as long as you possibly can when doing this exercise, but only go so far as to what you're comfortable with or when you run out of air. So I will be going over the techniques of this exercise for everyone and also including some things for people who are more experienced and who want to give themselves more of a challenge. So just keep that in mind. And also, if you do feel lightheaded during this exercise, that is completely normal. We are going to be hissing for a very long period of time or as long as you possibly can. So just make sure that you pace yourself. Make sure that you, when doing this outside of this tutorial, that you only do this maybe once or twice in a row because you don't want to get too lightheaded. You certainly don't want to do this while driving or operating any heavy machinery. And with that all understood, let's go ahead and begin the first variation. The first variation has to do with relaxation and awareness. So we're going to breathe in through the nose. I'm going to place myself in this posture here. So checking in, making sure that we're in good posture, making sure that our feet are where they need to be, hips are where they need to be. Everything is placed as we had covered previously in the section about the anatomy. So just a reminder, when you place your hands on your abdomen, it's going to be in the same style as what you did in the breathing awareness exercise. Thumbs on the sternum, pinky fingers on the navel, put them together, there we go. To feel the movement of the diaphragm and all the abdominal muscles and to get that full experience. So here we go. Breathing in, count of three. One, two, three, through the nose. Now, keep that going, keep the hiss going. Just because I'm done with the hiss doesn't mean that you stop. You keep going for as long as you possibly can. As you continue this exercise, you will feel the muscles in your abdomen start to contract. You might feel a slight stretch in the back as you squeeze inward and upward. You should be floating towards the ceiling as you're doing this exercise. Do not allow yourself to cave in, float float, float up to the ceiling, keep good posture. If you're finding that it's hard to get the last bit of air in, this is a challenge for our, the intermediate students, go ahead and contract the diaphragm and the abdominal muscles in such a way that it moves around. You can kind of, um, you can move around the air to get that last inch of air up and out. So that timer is now stopping. So you should be done at this point. Um, most people can last uh, anywhere between, you know, one second to a minute. I have seen students that have gone beyond a minute. So if you're up for the challenge uh, on your own, by all means, go for it. That's totally fine. But, you know, like I said, pace yourself. Use your common sense. Okay, so now, now that you know what's going on with the balloon breath, um, we're going to talk about the next variation, the second variation, which is um, the quick balloon breath in through the mouth. So the first exercise was designed to help relax the system. This second exercise is, help to, is designed to help you breathe in a large amount of air in a short amount of time, which is required, especially when you are singing in, sh in short bursts, if you have a lot of phrases, if you have a long note that you're about to hit, it requires a lot of air. So you want to learn to breathe in air, a lot of air for that matter, in a short amount of time. So that's what this is all about. A reminder, 
when you breathe into the mouth. Make sure that the teeth are filtering and that it is a pull from the diaphragm, not a pull from the larynx. So here we go. Count of three. One, two, three. Very good, keep going. The goal for this second variation is to get as close to the same time as you did for the first variation. So this shows you that you're using the same amount of air, breathing it in in a shorter amount of time. Same feeling, feeling the squeeze inward and upward, not feeling too stiff down here, but also active, not just a blob down here. It's squeezing inward along with the back muscles, bringing up the ribs and the chest, floating up to the ceiling, keeping good posture with the head and neck, not craning, not bending, keeping that good posture. If you are running out of air and need to breathe at this point, that is totally fine. You can breathe normally. For those of you who are still going, just work those abdominal muscles, work the back, work the diaphragm, get that going, squeeze it inward and upward, and voila, you are done. Fantastic. So those are the balloon breaths. They are very, very simple, as most of these exercises are truly simple, but it's consistent practice over time that will get the most value out of them. This has proven so useful in preservation of my voice and learning how to conserve the air that I use, which is very, very important when it comes to actually vocalizing. You do not want to push all the air out at once. You want to learn to push it up and conserve the air that you have to be as efficient with your instrument as possible. So I hope that clears up aspects of the breath and I hope those exercises prove very useful.